Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rinse at a time, back with this Friday morning guest, Mr. Stephen Dow from Velocity Mortgage. How are you doing, sir? I'm fantastic in yourself, sir. I'm doing great, man. So do me a favor, get that little marketing spiel out of the way so neither of us get in trouble. Okay. Again, although I happily work for Velocity Mortgage Capital, all of the ideas and topics discussed on this channel are that of my own, and let's get it cracking. Yeah. So the first thing I want to talk about is really the, I don't know, I don't know if it's a mantra of Stephen Dow or a mantra of Velocity Mortgage, but you've talked about it a couple of times being a make sense lender. Right. And I, I just want to hit that again. I think it is so important because again, a lot of people have, a lot of people when they think mortgage or debt, they think banks. Right. And banks, and frankly, I've been doing this a long time. Banks used to be super easy. Now they're not. Right. Now, just like I talk about having a buy box, they have a lending box. And if you would have like one variable outside that lend, you're like a big fat no. Right. And as inflation heats up, right, CPI came out today at 6.8. As banks, as rates go up, do banks get tighter? You just don't know. That's why I like having you and, and you know, speaking on behalf sometimes of Velocity Mortgage talking about being a make sense lender. So just talk about what that means to you when you say that, because I think it is so powerful. Uh, I mean, there's so many different uh, um, accommodating, I guess, aspects of our business, especially uh, when it comes to certain, um, I guess, shortages or, or deficiencies from a borrower standpoint, either obviously with documenting their income and or certain say, employment history uh, restrictions, uh, uh, you know, property uh, uh, value or loan amount uh, um, restrictions, things of that nature. We've got a very wider net, I guess, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So our guidelines are much more flexible. I mean, in the case of loan amounts, we'll go all the way down to 75,000. Mm -hmm. Most lenders won't. Right. Um, on commercial, we'll go all the way down to 100,000. Most commercial lenders don't touch anything under a million or even half a million. Right. Um, and then as far as like multiple properties, you know, blanket loans, things of that nature, we'll again, go all the way down to 50,000 per property value if you want to put them in a blanket at least. So at least two or more right. properties value all the way down to 50,000. So it's a very wide range of products to accommodate so many different possibilities of, as far as opportunities coming across your way, rather than going to all these different lenders, it's a one-stop shop. Right. And again, with different borrowers having different, you know, issues, hair on the deal, what have you, we tend to be able to overlook some of those, you know, again, issues or hair mm -hmm. just by having compensating factors. Because yeah. from our standpoint, we've seen from data, from years, you know, I would say almost decades at this point of, of, of uh, uh, loans that we've done um, so that we can kind of look at actual real working, you know, mm -hmm. numbers. Well, we did this loan back in 2005 at this, you know, uh, 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 LTV, this, uh, you know, FICO score, this was the situation on it. How did it perform? And, right. And, and, you know, so we found again, what makes our world go around typically is skin in the game. Right. So even if we don't verify income, if you got skin in the game and you got money in the bank, that usually trumps all other possible issues in the future. So yeah. we're usually okay. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's where the accommodation and the flexibility comes in. Yeah. So I want to hit that a couple of, from a diff, couple of different angles to really make yeah. sure that the people watching this at one rental at a time realize the power I'm giving them with the non-QM lender. Right. Would it be fair to say that non-QM lenders, generally speaking, are asset-based lenders? Verse. Uh, for the most part, and again, it depends on the non-QM lender. Sure. Uh, from our, our standpoint, that would be uh, more than, uh, it, it's, it's a higher quality borrower, but definitely the asset is also important as well. Uh, obviously, it does need to debt service at it, certain it, loan amounts and things like that. I, I, yeah, I just want to, I want to highlight why that's yeah. important for the newer borrowers. Mm -hmm. When I say asset-based lender, what that really means is most of you go to the bank, they're going to ask for your social security number and your credit report is, is, is going to be this or that. If you pass that, then they're going to look at your income. Can you document it as a W-2 or is it a 1099 or are you self-employed or whatever it is, right? All of these things can hurt you, the borrower. When I, when I talk about non-QM, this is the space, not just velocity, but the space right. in general. Most of them in my experience, and frankly, all of them, but I, I don't want to say all of them because it's all of my experience, which is not everything. Most of them look at the deal mm -hmm. a lot more than the borrower, right? When you're a bank, it's the borrower. It's the borrower. Right. Until you get to commercial, and then it's a different game. But most of the right. people that follow my channel are doing residential one through fours. Mm -hmm. I think non-QM lenders will look at the deal. So if you're someone who has one of those deals with hair on it, or you, the borrower, you have issues 
that make you a no for a bank, or right. even if it makes you hard for a bank, right? I don't know about right. you, but I freaking hate paperwork. <laughs> I've been run through the ringer a dozen times with people that say they can get bank loans. It just right. doesn't happen. Or it's just so excruciatingly painful as not to be right. worth it, right? Do the math, right? So, um, well, once yeah, you so get more, I think more along the lines of, of, of a more advanced investor, mm -hmm. in some cases, you, your finances get a little bit more complex. I'm sure as you can, can attest. Yeah. So, especially when you're trying to make the right moves and things of that nature. So yeah, multiple anyway. LLCs and right. so yeah. banks will tell you, yeah. And then four weeks, five weeks, six <laughs> weeks later. Yeah, no, sorry. We got the, you know, we can't qualify. So it's just it makes life a little bit easier because you can always make more money, but you can't make more time. You know, yeah, exactly. if you're working efficiently, then you, you, your money's going to be working for you. Yeah. yeah. And then the other thing to really think about is, um, for me, it's the notion of compensating factors, right. right? It's kind of a give and take. And mm -hmm. what banks don't give you, banks kind of have a, a lending box. You're the in or out, yes or no. What right. I saw with you, because again, we did a, we did two deals together, one purchase, one cash out refi. It's like, mm -hmm. hey, we just asked some questions. You're, I'm not talking to some artificial intelligence application. I'm talking to right. a human being who mm -hmm. is asking me questions going, hey, great. You said the rent is X, give me a lease. Very right. fair, right? right? So um talk about compensating factors, why that's important. Well, again, um in, in many cases, uh certain borrowers are gonna have quote unquote hair, you know, in comparison to the conventional guidelines yeah. that are cookie cutter. That's why if it fits a box, you can put it through a computer. Dude, you're you in know, the box, go get the box, go get those right. 10 loans. Yeah. All day long, all, all day, day long. But a lot of times, you know, bars have more complex lives, you know, they have side hustles or other businesses where, you know, now you're talking about tax returns and things of that nature. And if you're, you know, playing the tax game a little bit more aggressively, you're going to write off a lot. So you might not show a lot of income. Mm -hmm. So that's where it's going to make it much more difficult for you to get conventional financing. So with us, the paths of lease resistance and our rates are pretty competitive at this yeah. point in, in comparison to, you know, conventional, uh, um, you know, bank loans. So I think the compensating factor typically is just, you know, either good FICO score, obviously, um, seasoning as far as the borrower for experience. Yeah. LTV. So the lower equity position, the more willing that we're going to make the exception, if, you know, mm -hmm. depending upon other shortage you know, uh, deficiencies. Yeah. For example, although we don't uh, market that we'll go below 650 as far as our minimum FICO score, we will to some degree, but it's case by case. Yeah. You know, you got to find out what happened, why your scores dropped down to 650. If it was, you know, an erroneous something that we could fix or just over, you know, uh, extended credit, but you paid everything on time and, and you know, the, the private debt service is very high, we'll, we'll be okay with that. Um, we might limit you on the LTV to, uh, you know, offset the lower FICO score, but now yeah. we're going to make sense of it because it's, hey, it's, okay it's at me, least a discussion, not a, not just a no, right? Right, right. Yeah, yeah. So again, th there's going to be some compensating factors that will allow us to then at least try to make the deal happen to some degree or just make the exception and give them the desired terms that they're looking for, even though they don't fit the normal guidelines. So yeah. it's just either FICO score, number of properties owned, LTV position, um, uh, you know, money in the bank is really the, the biggest key, to be yeah. honest with you. You know, if you have a lot of reserves after down payment, that's okay. really because money go. fixes everything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then the other thing to talk about, folks, is you really got to do the math because the lumberjack or Matt and I, I think it was two weeks ago. He just right. bought a 12 unit building or actually, I think he was doing a refi. I think we did a, we did the math on a, uh, on a prepay. Right. Discussion. And really the whole idea of doing a commercial loan again, folks, multifamily apartments, 30 right. year money office. I've done the deal. I've seen the deal. I have the payments. Um, you got to just do the math, right? It's, it's right. interesting what happens when you take a 25 year am and you do a 30 year, right? It's, you yep. don't appreciate just how impactful those other 60 year or 60 months are. So again, folks, when you're getting this and you're really going for cash flow, it's the payment. So yep. uh, there's just so much power in this. Do the math. If people want to reach out to you and see if their scenario fits, Stephen, how do you want them to do that? Best way right now, because it's just literally getting flooded with just the overwhelming positive response. Because again, I love they're, that. they're picking up on it. Shout out to Will. I'm not going to give the last name. That's fine. Uh, yeah. He gets First it. names only. Uh, Multifamily. No. We're, yeah. He's... He crunched the numbers, very savvy investor. So he, he, he knew what was up. So we're working on several other ones for him right now, as far as that 30 year, because he, you know, he's getting approached with maybe four and a quarter or something like that, but on a five year fix, maybe 20, 25 yeah. a.m., something like that. But when you do the numbers versus ours, all we done 399, 
which is what Will is actually getting. Oh, 30 good for him. Fixed. Yeah. So it was just like no brainer. Three nine nine Will. Awesome. I got one of those too. They're really yeah. cool. They're yeah, that's sure. a thirty year fix. Yeah, good deal. Good deal. All right. Uh, <laughs> so you what? So they're emailing you, right? Or what yes, uh, sdao at velocitymortgage.com. Um, just remember to put in the subject line or at O R A A T two A's. Sometimes mm -hmm. people forget the other A, and uh, so that would make it past the the uh, firewall because a lot of you guys get, are getting stuck. And sometimes I'm so slammed that I don't get to see the the quarantine for the day until like yeah. later. You know yeah. me, I work until two, three o'clock in the morning sometimes. So then I'm like, oh, we're applying at three in the morning, four in the morning yeah. via email. So I'm not able to call right away. So just uh, remember to uh, put the acronym O-R-A-A-T in the subject line. And then just leave your best phone number where I can reach you back at because phone call, a lot faster than yeah. back and emails forth back and now. forth. I just, yeah. yeah, I'm getting flooded with emails right now. So yeah, folks, I'm, awesome have, I'm not complaining. This is awesome. No, no. I love being on the channel. People are awesome off this channel. Yeah, one rental at a time, people are really good. They're really doing this business. Uh, it, it's pretty awesome. So again, folks, if you can go get bank money, please go get bank please. money. But if you awesome. have a deal, portfolio loan, 30-year money on apartments, there's just things that a non-QM lender will do for you that others can't. And I'm giving it to you as a sample. So Stephen, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. Mm -hmm.